Right now on Sunrise, a major decision could come down in the Derek Chauvin case. Why the state Supreme Court gave the power to Judge Cahill to decide if he wants to reinstate the third degree murder charge. And you may see a few flakes fly this morning as our spring storm exits the region. Sun comes back out today. I'll let you know how the weekend's shaping up. Help is on the way for millions struggling to pay the bills. When President Biden says he'll sign off on those $1,400 stimulus checks and just when they'll hit your bank account. Ramsey County is looking to drop its mask mandate, but now the state is taking a stand. The great mask debate continues in St. Paul. He takes care of your packages. Now he's being held a hero. How this FedEx driver saved a woman's life after she crashed into a freezing river. It's Thursday, March 11th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. That was one year ago today. It was the start of our world turning upside down. 12 months of a new normal with masks, social distancing, and isolation. It hasn't been easy, but we've learned quite a bit. So knowing what you know now, what advice would you give yourself at this point last year? Join the conversation. Use that number right there. 763-797-7215. Text us to join the conversation. We'll share your comments later on in the show. Don't panic. There will be toilet paper. That's what I'd tell yes. myself. That's yeah. what was happening Everybody this time. Everybody panicked yeah. about the mm -hmm. toilet paper. Hey, we got the whole team here this morning. Lisa's got an update in your traffic in a bit, but first, Guy, we're getting a bit of everything depending on where you are. Absolutely so, and right now in the Care 11 backyard, I'm seeing the flurries kind of pick up a little bit here in Golden Valley, but especially North Metro, that's really, really seeing the snow kind of come down as the system exits. It's pushed off to the north and east, so we're getting a little bit of that wraparound, which means wind and leftover snow. So this will clip the metro area and the Twin Cities area as we're right on the cusp of that leading edge of snow. Right now, cloudy skies, 33 feels like 25. It is breezy out there, so keep that in mind this morning uh, when you're stepping out. Hold on tight to that car door. School day planner looks sunny, pleasant finish, highs upper 40s. And unfortunately, we do have a crash that popped up uh, in Maple Grove near Weaver Lake Road, 94 eastbound at 101st Avenue. You can see it blocking that left shoulder, so it's not causing too bad of a slowdown in the eastbound lanes, but the westbound lanes, we are seeing a little bit of gawker traffic this morning. So just a heads up for that. That's the only issue I am tracking here around the Twin Cities Metro. No other crashes to report at this time. Well, this morning we could finally get an answer about whether a third degree murder charge will be added back in the Derek Chauvin case. That after a big announcement from the state Supreme Court yesterday, Jennifer joins us now live from the government center to explain. Jen, good morning. Yeah, good morning. That big development, the state Supreme Court said it will not intervene in this case. That means unless something happens with the Court of Appeals, Judge Cahill can now decide whether to reinstate that third degree murder charge. He could, however, find a new reason to leave it out. We'll hopefully find answers this morning. If he does re-add it, that would most likely mean this trial will not be delayed and can continue without the concern of these appeals issues. Another big development, we now know the three former MPD officers charged in George Floyd's death will not be testifying in Chauvin's trial. Those other three officers are scheduled to stand trial together in August. They have a Fifth Amendment right not to self-incriminate by testifying in Chauvin's trial. And because they won't, that eliminates the possibility that one of them will turn on Chauvin during his trial. Again, though, this morning, the big uh, development potentially we're looking for once court uh, resumes at 8 this morning is whether Judge Cahill will reinstate that third degree murder charge. Yeah, and we will be watching that live this morning. Jennifer, thank you. After the motions hearing, jury selection will pick back up. So far, five jurors have been seated out of 16 people people questioned. Three weeks have been set aside for this process. In all, 14 people are needed, 12 jurors and two alternates. And we have continuing coverage online every day of the trial, including a live blog and gavel to gavel live video stream. Just head on over to care11.com or download the care 11 app on your phone or tablet to watch live anytime. Here's a live look from our nation's capital this morning, where Wednesday President Biden scored his first major legislative win. The House passed his massive $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill. The president is expected to sign it tomorrow. It includes, among other things, direct payments up to $1,400 to certain Americans and $15 billion in aid for small businesses. Here in Minnesota, a relief package is on the table as well. It's the governor's $150 million summer learning plan. Kaya Edwards joins us now. This would affect families statewide. What's the latest on this, Kaya? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, hey, uh, hey, Chris. So basically, um, the governor is going to call on the legislature today, asking lawmakers to immediately pass that summer learning plan. So this is part of his COVID-19 recovery budget. The governor's office says the overall purpose of it is to help students catch up after just everything that they've gone through during the pandemic. So here are some examples of areas that would be funded. School and community-based learning opportunities, field trips, hands-on learning, mental health support, summer school for preschoolers, and college courses for graduating seniors. But keep in mind, this plan is likely going to be a tough sell to Republicans because just last weekend, just consider um, Senate Majority Leader Paul Gazelka, the fact that he was published in the Star Tribune. Um, here you can see he was criticizing the governor's emergency powers. He says the legislature hasn't had enough input during the pandemic and after a full year now under the governor's control, families are not better off. Meanwhile, the governor's office says this would need to be passed by April 15th so that school districts have enough time to prepare for summer school. Yeah, two words a lot of kids don't like to hear, summer school. We'll keep you on top of that. Thanks a lot, Kaya. <laughs> Now time for your morning rush. A serial rapist in the Twin Cities will learn his fate today in a courtroom. Jory Weebrand will be sentenced today after pleading guilty to several counts of criminal sexual conduct. Many of the incidents happened around the University of Minnesota. He's expected to be sentenced to nearly 46 years in prison. If you live in Plymouth, prepare for a noisy few months. Crews will be working to clean up Sunday's train derailment near Schmidt Lake Road. Officials there say because of the size and scope of the train cars and equipment at the site, it'll take them several months to to clean it all up. Representative Ilhan Omar is reintroducing a bill today to get rid of one of your biggest monthly payments. She's holding a news conference today on a bill that would cancel rent and mortgage payments until next April. The bill would offer total forgiveness on payments without damaging your credit or rent history. It would also set up a relief fund for landlords. The Minnesota Wilds are riding a two game hot streak. The team beat the Vegas Golden Knights four to three last night. Capo Kakinen stopped 24 shots to win his eighth consecutive start for Minnesota. The Wild take on the Arizona Coyotes tomorrow night at the X. And that's your Thursday morning rush. Now on our Sunrise Live, one Minnesota city says the residents don't have to enforce the state's mask mandate. And it has hundreds of people fired up on our Care Love Facebook page talking about this one. Now, the city of Ramsey, their city council, they voted to stop enforcing the state's mask mandate, introducing a resolution saying that city resources shouldn't be used to enforce the governor's order. It actually passed by four to three votes, even though the city attorney told them multiple times that approving the measure is outside the city council's authority. Executive Order 2081 was signed by Governor Walls back in July of 2020 and requires Minnesotans to wear face coverings in indoor public spaces to slow the spread of COVID-19. One city councilor went so far as to comparing the order to women's suffrage in Japanese internment camps during World War II. In the entire history of the world, we have never put entire populations of countries or states in masks. We have not covered their ability to breathe and restricted their breathing. There is no precedent for this. How can that not be considered experimental research? Now, the two council members who introduced the legislation couldn't be reached for a comment, but Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison's office sent a statement saying the state's executive order takes precedent over measures passed by lower units of government. So in this case, the state order trumps the council's vote. Now, a lot of people are talking about this online here, like Rob, who says he backs the city council 100 percent and thinks the governor's mandates need to end. But Jackie writes, my wife has to work in Ramsey, but doesn't get to vote. Do you wear a shirt and pants? Wear the mask. It's seriously not that hard. Of course, we're going to be keeping an eye on what happens with the city of Ramsey. But if you want to read more about this, just head to our website, care11.com. But yeah, I'm surprised. You know, they've been they were told that, you know, they can't actually do this. So I don't know if they thought it'd be symbolic to vote in favor. I'm not sure. Yeah, but, you know, the, anytime masks are brought up, it's super controversial right now. It sure is. Yeah. All right, Guy, let's get to you for the one thing weather. Hey, take a look at radar this morning. You can see that little cluster of snow kind of pushed through the St. Cloud area, the Buffalo area. You may be seeing some leftover flurries at this time. This will continue to track all up to the east.
And we are tracking the crash on the stretch of 94 eastbound. You can see it's blocking that left lane at 101st Avenue up in Maple Grove. Uh, westbound lanes, though, starting to pick up. I'll be taking a look at some drive times in that area here coming up in just a few minutes. Look forward to it. Thanks, Alicia. A car salesman risked his life to stop someone from stealing from his lot. We show you the heart-stopping video. Plus, looking back one year of pan pandemic life. We talk with today's Savannah Guthrie about the last 12 months and the big special NBC is airing tonight. Plus, coming up tonight at 10, who should investigate when an inmate dies in a Minnesota jail? Here's a AJ Legault with a preview. Don't leave me in here. The voice of 19-year-old Abby Rudolph, jailed for suspected shoplifting, talking with her mom two days before she died. Let me, me be alone in a locked room with puka over me. Clay County Jail video showed her vomiting over and over, suffering from drug withdrawal that went untreated. She just became progressively sicker and sicker and sicker and nobody did anything about it. But the county investigated itself and overlooked serious problems. Our investigation finds that happens a lot in Minnesota. No one should be investigating a death that occurred in their own jail. Tonight at 10, a call for independent investigations into deaths in Minnesota jails. For CARE 11 Investigates, I'm AJ Legault.